Day number five, midway through my little challenge I've created for myself. This one's gonna to be tool belt review. Something different out of my office. I haven't seen as vast of a tool belt review before. Um, I've got a fair few. I don't know why. It's just something I think I get a little bit bored with the same setup and wanna keep changing it up all the time. Um, I've come to the conclusion that the perfect tool belt's a little bit of a myth and there's always gonna be something a little bit fucked up with the one you got. So you're kind of just trying to pick the best with what you have. Um, keep in mind as you watch this Diamondback and Occidental, uh, my company here in Australia, we sell those. Um, if I seem biased towards them, I probably am. Go and buy some, www.thepeoplestoolco.com.au. You're welcome. Um, other than that, I've paid for the rest of them with my own money, nothing sponsored or anything like that. Um, that's kind of about the precursor that you need to know. Straight out the gate, I can save you watching the whole video if you're curious what one I would wear. If I could only wear one, it'd be the Diamondback Denali 2.0. Um, ticks a lot of boxes, I'll get to why, but if I can save you watching a 10 minute video for a three second answer, I might as well. Um, if you want to see what I have to say about each, stick around. Um, starting with the Buckaroo, this was my first kind of professional set of bags. Um, I did my apprenticeship and all that kind of thing in just your standard off the shelf, um, $50 tool belt. They got me through, but yeah. Um, Buckaroo are really good. You can get them pretty much anywhere in Australia, as in walk into the shop and pick one up that day if you have a blowout with your current bags. The main problem I had with Buckaroo is I'm pretty small around the waist, which means I can't fit many accessories on. Um, and I like to have a pouch each, each side which really limited me to what I could carry with these because they don't have, in the pouches like the others, they don't have a nail pick slot, they don't have a combo square slot. Um, the organization's really minimal. There's no kind of chisel sleeves or anything like that. So you do have to go frogs, um, which is fine if you're bigger around the waist. Um, it was comfy enough, not the most comfortable, but they are quite heavy. I found with this pouch, especially the five pouch, it's really easy to lose shit in the bottom of them because there's so many, you don't check it all the time um, and you'll just get a build up of bolts and unnecessary shit you don't actually have to carry. Um, something to look out for. If I was buying another set, I'd probably just get two of these and put one on each side and then my hammer loop at the back. Moving on from that would be so the history of my nail bags went from um, my apprenticeship bags to Buckaroo to me starting the tool company. I went to the first generation Denali. Um, one of my other boys has got that one. Uh, then we got Occidental in. Um, so I wore Occidental when they were kind of new and it was exciting for me. Um, then I went back to the Denali 2.0 when they released that, um, which had a lot of welcome upgrades to it. So do the Denali next, because it kind of, in the storyline of my tool belts, it is what came after Buckaroo. Um, like I said earlier, if I could only have one set of bags, it would be these. Really well thought out. The pockets are bigger, which was a big issue on the first generation Denali. It was just too tight. They're pretty good now. They walk that fine line between... So obviously the wider your pouches are the further it sits out from you um, which is fine if you're just doing form work and you're not really climbing through a heap but as soon as you start doing trusses you want a smaller nail bag to climb through all the webs and shit these ones sit just close enough um, while still maintaining being able to get your hand to the bottom and pull out whatever clouds and shit are in there um, also with these you only need the two pouches you can go accessories and that kind of thing, but with just the two pouches, you will have a really good setup. Um, tool side, you get your hammer sleeve, 
works really well with both a straight and a curved grip. Um, I've it's not recommended and if you cut it it will void your warranty but we generally just drop our chisels in the tool slot with nothing in there um, it's held up fine uh, keep it chalky in the top I did do a video on these when I was wearing them of what I keep in my tool belt so I'll try and link that in the description so you can go have a squeeze see what you think um, also with these ones they had probably the best phone slot built in um, which is more and more important as the days go by. Um, hung the nail, bat, nail gun pretty well. It's kind of the downfall to this Milwaukee gun is the nail gun hook isn't the furthest thing out. So you'll find yourself having to push the hook onto what you're trying to hook it onto because it's in line with your magazine, um, which plays into your nail bag if you keep your nail gun on you most, most of the day. Um, on from that, oops, there's an pick. Um, on from that was Occidental. These bags surprised me a little bit. The Occidental Adjuster Fit Fat Lip, I think. Um, these were really fucking comfortable. I had a hard time getting out of these bags. The downside for me was they were so wide. Um, they're buckets, pretty much, in short. Uh, but these were really fucking comfy. I don't wear suspenders because most, they annoy me more than anything. Um, so these ones sat really well. They took probably six weeks to break in, but once they had, they were fucking sweet. With your hammer, you got your loop on the front there. These bags will probably last you 15 years. That hammer loop's probably only gonna last you two, if that. Um, so you've got the one at the back there, which once you get your aim in, it comes out and back in quick enough, but it does take a minute to learn. Um, the tape pouch fits your 10 meter, no worries. Um, and then the other side's just pretty much a big bucket with a few organizers, Stanley knife and that kind of thing. Um, if all you do is shoot walls together all day, I'd nearly just go these. Um, they're light, they're big, they carry a heap of racks of nails if that's what you're doing, and comfy as fuck. My most recent one, and probably one I haven't seen a video on YouTube before, is the Acrobus. I think the way he sells is, it's really fucking smart. So he'll open his store for, I think it's 24 hours once a month um, and he'll only sell what he can make. And then once you get your order in, he'll make it and he'll send it out before he opens his store again. Um, so these had, I waited about two weeks from when I bought them for him to send them. And then it was about, I think 10 days to get them from Canada to Australia. Um, as soon as I picked them up, I was really concerned about the weight. They are fucking heavy. Um, that said, I bought the biggest bags he had, which I didn't really need to. Um, that in mind, these are exceptionally comfortable, far more comfortable than I thought they were gonna be. Um, and very well thought out. Like this tool side pouch is pretty flawless. In my opinion, my only gripe with it would be the Curve Grip Martinez isn't that smooth getting it in and out. Um, I could put a straight grip on that and it would probably fix it. I could also fight through it and use it more. It will probably stretch and wear in and out fine, but I like the one on the back. Um, even if it taps you in the leg, it's not a massive deal to me. Um, this side here, I didn't need the pouch on the bottom. I probably could have gone the size smaller. Um, it does sit out like fucking <laughs> near 300 mil, but live and learn. That's completely my own fault. Speed, speed square slot and nail pick 
take a little bit of getting used to because they kind of sit on top of each other. I'll do a close up of it so you can see what I mean. Um, and then this nail gun clip slot is also a really cool feature that none of the others have. Um, it's not make or break, but it's nice to see someone's actually put some thought into it. Uh, I think most expensive nail bag here would probably be the Acrobus or the Denali. Um, Buckaroo would probably be the cheapest and Occidental would be your mid-raid. Um, they're all professional grade nail bags. Like I said, if I could only have one, it'd be the Denali. The Acrobus is a really good set of bags, but there's probably a little bit of novelty factor in there for me at the minute that they, given that they are quite new. Um, I'll do a close up of this buckle feature on it as well. It's quite cool the way he's got it, so it's adjustable. Um, and that is really smooth. Um, so, yeah. Today's video done. Tomorrow is number six. I haven't really planned any of this out, so each morning I'll wake up and figure out what video I'm gonna make that day. And generally I end up editing it at about 11 o'clock at night and just uploading it before the day ends. But it's a fun challenge. And the way I'm looking at it, if I can do 10 in 10 days, then I can bring myself to do uh, one video a week for everyone and try and consistently upload and get something good going on here. So I'm keen to get out of lockdown, get back on site, and I can actually start to do some of the shit that I'm getting asked to do, um, doing layouts and trusses and that kind of thing. It should make for far more entertaining viewing than this. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, let us know what you think. Um, any other ideas you got as well, shit you wanna see, let me know. Um, like I said in my tool belt video, I don't actually have that bigger plans for this channel, um, but I'm willing to put the time into it and see where it goes as long as people are engaged and like wanting to see it, um, which so far it seems like they are. So we'll keep going with it and keep letting us know what you want to see.